Alrighty, so this is going to be the first video draft analysis I'm going to go do. Hopefully fixed all the problems with uh, audio, and I haven't scripted this at all, so we'll see how it goes. Um, but yes, this is going to be um, no core gaming game one, week one, uh, the draft. So first things first, I'm going to walk you guys through it and point out some mistakes some things that maybe could have been done better but weren't necessarily classified as mistakes and then i'll talk about what i would do um going through this draft so starting off blue side bands yep i know how drafting works um we have the kazakhs so this is specifically targeted at the enemy jungler. Kazakh's one trick, nothing wrong with this. Um, I actually don't know what the first ban for red side is because it's uh, blocked out, but it is followed up with a Seraphine, which is another good ban. Oh, Seraphine isn't actually on this tool. So we'll have to skip that off. You can tell I've not, script, uh, not scripted this at all. Um, but that's Seraphine out, very solid ban. She's ridiculously strong right now the only reason you wouldn't ban her is if you're looking to pick her up on blue site but uh no quarter gaming support does not play it and thus banning out is perfectly fine um ban two responds with victor um i believe this is targeted the mid lane victor's not usually a champion that you want to be banning out phase one but he can sometimes come out like R3, uh, blue, blue 3, R3, um, and can be quite potent there. So banning out first phase is fine. Uh, finally is the Poppy. This ban doesn't make too much sense to me. Um, so like the reasons you'd want to ban Poppy is if you're going to be picking a lot of sort of dash reliant champions in the first phase so for example if you wanted to pick something like you know galio camille in first phase then you would ban out the poppy um otherwise the value you get from banning this poppy is pretty low so not a huge fan of the poppy ban uh, ban three for red site is tristana um tristana's an all right ban it's nothing special um but uh if you see the opponent plays a lot of tristana sure ban it out and we get into the pick phase so scarner being first picked for the blue side obviously scarner is a pretty strong champion right now um definitely one of the foremost pick champions in pro play at the moment um, however, one thing to note about Skarner, um, does get kind of cock-blocked by certain team comps and champions. Um, lately it's been running Phase Rush with the, um, Chem Tank, so it can get in, get out really fast. So that negates some of the weaknesses, but just be aware that, um, the enemy can draft against things like this. Okay, dokie. So what does the enemy pick? The enemy picks Caitlyn. So one of the better ADCs against Skarner and reasonably strong in the meta right now. It's it's not, you know, Jin or um, Kai'Sa, but it's, you know, like second tier. As well as the um, Sejuani, which isn't great here. Um... It's mediocre into Skarner, it's mediocre blinded, um, but at this point it's going to be hard to punish, so it's not horrendous. Following that up is the Sivir um, and the Thresh. So Sivir is pretty decent here, um, good synergies with Skarner, um, good matchup into Caitlyn, and a Decent time dealing with Sejuani, you know, spell shielding the ult or the uh, dash to shut down some of the engage that, that Sejuani has. Um, or some of the pick potential, I should say. And 
finally, here comes the kicker. What have we forgotten? Morgana exists. So Morgana, huge counter to Thresh, huge counter to Skarner, does okay into Sivir. It's not like tremendous, but you, you can kind of just poke down Sivir with W in lane. Um, so it's not a horrible matchup. It has really good synergies with Caitlyn. So this is the pick that really like starts causing problems, this Morgana pick here. Um, so there are two ways to get around this. Uh, the first way, obviously, is to ban Morgana um, instead of maybe the Poppy. Um, and the second way would be to hold off on picking the Thresh here on blue 3. And instead you can pick something like a blindable mid lane, such as, you know, Orianna or... I hesitate to say Corky because he can be punished, but that, that sort of thing. Um, Azir is really good right now. I don't think no quarter gaming plays it, but um, yeah, stuff like that. Um, or you could try and blind a top lane here. Uh, it's not amazing, but you could pick, you know, Malphite or, you know. Nars decent in the meta right now. He doesn't have too many, um, like, hard counters. Um but does struggle in some matchups, so that's an option there. But continuing on, we see the blue side banning Silas. Yes. Um, I guess they're potentially concerned of Silas stealing some of the good ults here. Um, Sivir's a pretty good ult to steal. Scar's a pretty good ult to steal. Um, so yeah, a little bit scary. Um, is responded with a Shen ban. So Shen into this comp is decent. Um, gives a little bit of more of a bubble for Sivir, who's already actually really safe. Sivir is super, super safe here. Um, as well as the engage potential with Skarner. Skarner ults in, or, or Shen ults Skarner. Skarner goes in, ults back, pulls back, and then Shen taunts. So that's a pretty potent engage. Um, just looking to get rid of that. Um, next up is the Volley Bear. So the Volley Bear here isn't super great of a ban. Um, Volley Bear isn't too much of a threat to Skarner or Thresh, and Sivir realistically shouldn't be getting caught uh, by any Volley Bear. Like charges or alts or whatever, so it's not a great pick, uh, great ban here, but it's not horrible either. And then finally, getting rid of Malphite. So a little bit worried that um, a Malphite engage could be scary, especially with um, Silas, who is often picked as the counter, being out of the picture. Uh, moving on to phase two. Picks. We have Galio here in the mid lane. Um, generally, you want to pick Galio when you're looking to combo it with something. Um, I guess the combo here would be Sejuani Charge, which isn't super great, but it's not horrible. And it does okay into the enemy team comp. Um, following it up is the Corky and the Gnar. Uh, both of these are pretty decent picks. Um, Corky, it could be argued that Corky is going to struggle a lot here. Um, it's possible that something like Illusion would be better, um, but overall it's it's okay. Um, and finally, or, oh, I've accidentally just moved Corky instead of picking here. It is the Jace. Um, Jace has a decent matchup into Nar, um, negates the ranged advantage, has a lot of burst, um, but it is very much a skill matchup. Uh, I don't think that Jace provides much for this team comp, to be honest. Um, its main purpose should be to get um, side lane pressure. But later on in the game, it is, it is difficult to get side lane pressure 
um, from NAR. Um, it's possible, but uh, it's it's a pretty even pick um, for the last two picks there. So, um, let's talk about the obvious problem. The obvious problem is, of course, the purple Morgana. Um, huge counter to both the Skarner and the Thresh. Um, and doesn't have a bad matchup in to Sivir, as well as a good synergy with Caitlyn. So, this pick is what's really making the draft difficult. Uh, because if this is something like a, um, I don't know, a Karma or a Janna, for example, um, you can kind of just run in with Skarner, threaten the ult, force out either Janna ult or um, like a Karma empowered E, um, and then back off because it's free. Um, it's completely free to do that. Uh, but with the Morgana, you can just hold your spell shield until the Skarner gets within melee range of someone, and then reactively, or well, not reactively, preemptively um, cast the spell shield on whoever the Skarner's target would be. Which means that it's really hard for Skarner, because you have to bait out the spell shield by running up to someone, waiting a second, and then running to a different target. Um, or you're just useless in the game, which is, it just feels really bad. Um, so that's pretty difficult um, to draft against at that point. Um, and that's really the main issue of this draft. Um, so I'm going to go through same pick ban for the first phase, and then I'll swap up a little bit um, whilst trying to keep the, the core identity of the team. So we are going to go... Um, Kazix, which is absolutely fine. Um, we're going to go blank, Victor, Seraphine, into Tristana, and I'm actually going to change... Am I going to change this to be a... Yeah, we'll, we'll get rid of the Morgana because we know our intention is to first pick that Skarner. Um, possibly they might ban it out, but um, yeah. So we pick up the Skarner. Um, they respond with Caitlyn and Sejuani. I think picking the Sivir here is absolutely fine. But... Um, when, oh, nope, I don't want Braum. When it gets to third pick, I want something that synergizes with Sivir and Skarner. Um, so I'm going to pick up a Oriana. Now, they might change their third pick, or, well, they have to change their third pick because they can't pick Morgana here. Um, and I don't think they'd pick their support here. Um, I think they'd probably pick their mid lane. And Galio is fine into Oriana, but they might pick something um, a bit more aggressive, like Azir. Um, so focusing like entirely on that range advantage they get from um, Caitlyn Azir. Uh, this is still okay. It just means that you might have to, you know, force out a zero ult for free instead of uh, getting a Skarner pick. Uh, so moving on to phase two bans, we ban out stuff that helps them with their long ranged picks. So uh, supports like Janna, supports like Karma. Um, we're not too worried about Braum, but yeah, I think. Karma's probably the the worst support that we could uh, go against. And they're like, oh, we don't want to get engaged on. What supports could we ban out here? Um, we're going to get rid of the Rel. 
Oh, Rel is not here either. So Rel is banned. And they're going to get rid of um, Alistair. Um, and then in their fourth pick, they have to pick either their support or their top laner. I don't think they want to blind their top laner because they're looking to get like an aggressive advantage here. So they're going to pick a support such as Jenna. Um, and then you go, hmm, well, they've got Caitlyn, they've got Janna, but these are quite immobile long range carries. So we want something that can get onto their carries that benefits from Silver Alt, and maybe we can stick a ball on it or something. So we want Nautilus, something like this. And for the top lane, the Gnar pick is absolutely fine. Gnar is completely fine here. Um, and they'll respond with Jace, because it suits their comp. So now we've got actually a pretty even match here. Um, bot lane, you have potential to get picks, because Janna, um, Caitlyn, does struggle against um, Nautilus and Gage. Um, especially if there's a threat of a Skarner. You've got a fairly even matchup mid. Um, Oriana, of course, is being, you know, handshaken with Azir in pro play even. So this is pretty even. And then top lane, you have a even lane. And then you scale slightly better into team fights because Gnar. Um, especially if you can get like a TP flank with Mega Gnar or something like that. Um, so you see how just, you know, banning the Morgana um, and then picking the Oriana third um, completely changed the, the draft here. So that's, I think, going to be all for this recording. Um, I will be doing a VOD review of this game specifically. Um, I don't know whether I'll record it or not, but um, yeah. And then I'll have another draft review of the second game. So I will end that here. Thanks for uh, watching and see you next time.